All right, so the next part of this uh, will be creating triangular faces from those surface patches we created in part one. Um, let's start just with the, the single single surface. We can always switch back and forth, um, but just to keep it simple uh, and to kind of be able to walk our way around, we'll just look at this, this single surface. So I'm just going to copy and paste the client that I created up above, and I'll, I'll hide this one. Um, so what we're going to do is essentially explode the surface to get at its vertices, and then we'll draw polylines to create two triangles. Then we'll wrap those up into a server and pass them downstream. Sounds simple enough. The The trick's going to be uh, managing the lists and data trees so that um, we keep everything clean. We don't generate uh, unnecessarily complex data structures in each one of these functions. The idea being that they want to be as flexible as possible so they can be reused in the future. All right, so let's get started. Um, we have the driving surface. To get at its vertices, we'll go to the Surface tab, Analysis section, BREP Components. The BREP is our driving surfaces. In this case, it's just one, but again, we'll, we'll look at uh, the whole collection in a second. And as you can see, we have four vertices, one, two, three, four. I don't quite know the order, and that's the next, next thing to do. Um, so out of the sets tab, list section, list item, the list we're interested in is the list of vertices, and I will just use a panel in this case, and I can initialize that by pressing equals zero. So that'll just give me a panel with a single character, in this case zero, and we'll be able to see which one of our points is the first in the list that green one there. Copy and paste this a couple times and we're going to get access to all four points. One, two, three. And as I select these we can see the order so we're going kind of counterclockwise here around the horn. Um, Alright, so if this is our zero point, let's let's draw counterclockwise, and we'll draw two triangles. We'll start with one that goes zero, one, two, and then it will close itself back to zero. So curve polyline is in the spline section here. Polyline and of course to input multiple vertices this is looking for a list so uh, we'll have to hold down shift and we'll draw that polyline um, it's probably a little hard to see let's hide those and I'm gonna hide that base surface in Rhino okay so there's our polyline and as you can see it's going from 0, 1, 2, and it needs to be closed. Um, the second input of the component is a boolean, and it's asking us whether or not we want to close the polyline. In this case, we do, so we'll provide a true value. Uh, that's the boolean toggle from the special tab here. And so there we go. Now we've got a closed triangular face. All right, let's do that same thing with uh, this, the second face here. I'm going to right-click the V and disconnect all. And let's let's just be sure we get the order right again. So our first one was zero, one, two. The next one will be two, three, zero. So two, shift, three. Shift zero. Perfect. 
Okay, now I'll uh, just hide the points. We're done with those. And lastly, we're going to merge these two into a single list. So we could do this just by uh, kind of putting them both into a curve component. But just to make the point clear, I'm going to grab a merge uh, node out of the sets uh, set section, tree tab, merge. And this might be a little different. I'm using the newest version of Grasshopper, but um, hopefully we'll end up with two polylines in the same same tree branch, ideally. So obviously they'll be there when there are only two items. Uh, but now just let's, while we've got this, Let's look at the, the whole collection of surfaces and make sure that this works. So basically what we've got now, everything seems to be working. We have our triangular grid across the surface. And if we look at the output tree here, we have um, a branch. Each branch contains two polylines, this one and this one. So that seems to make sense. Um, but I think just again to kind of keep this simple, I think the best thing to do is going to be to flatten this because we want each function to again be kind of as simple as possible. So unless we really need that level of structure that connects those two faces into a branch of a tree, um, we'll get rid of that structure for now and just flatten the list. Um, again, just to be sure, we can switch back and forth. And you see we end up with a, a single uh, single character deep tree with a single surface. And same thing with the collection of surfaces. So that's really clean. It's just a list of polylines at the zero path. So let's call that a function. I'm going to um, create a server for this one, too. Um, in this case, we're dealing with curves. So grab a curve. That's our output. The wire display will be hidden. Now I'll right click up here to make this color default. And we'll name this, um, let's call them triangular faces server and we'll create our client right there so you can either change the color I usually just uh, delete it and um, grab that one uh, hopefully we'll get a, an eyedropper or something in the future uh, triangular faces and be sure to have your server provide that triangular faces with data. All right, now let's just hide everything and we'll just wrap this up uh, with a title and our background, um, our white square back there to group the whole function. So let's call this one draw planar triangular faces. Right click and make defaults and group. Okay, so we've got our triangular faces. Next step will be to offset and fillet them. And um, as you can see, everything's still working. We can switch back and forth between the, the single surface and the list of surfaces. And uh, the sliders are still creating the, all those surface patches. So, so far, so good. On to part three.